maggiore. Oh, the absolute and joyous bliss of it. With this blue lake at our feet as we sit and eat lunch and the Alps behind us, those Swiss snow fields we left two hours ago, imagine the vulgarity of snow in July. Our senses are caressed again by sights and sounds and smells and tastes, and they're all Italian. We've come home. Capri. I don't know if the Italians have exclusive artistic rights to moonlight or not, but they certainly do know how to use it. It is unreal for anything to be so ravishing as this full moon night on this fabled isle, yet magically it has become the reality. Venezia. Have you noticed how often the combination of this mad miracle called Venice with that miraculous madness called music seems to result in an excessive amount of 6-8 time? Chopin, Offenbach, Bernstein, etc. Everyone has a special Venetian memory, and far too many involve those awful pigeons in Piazza San Marco carrying on like so many feathered chorus girls. My favorite, as of now came about through a terrible night of insomnia, which drove me to sit up reading till all hours. Perhaps I dozed, but when I next looked out the window, dawn was gently breaking, all pale blues, pinks, and rose. Floating across the lagoon was one lone gondola, and suddenly, for me to have Venice at dawn and the gondolier's song all for my very own was almost too beautiful to bear. He was singing, of course, in 6-8 time. Firenze. 
Anyone foolish enough to try to get through the Uffizi Gallery in one day will carry away a memory of exhaustion, confusion, and very sore feet. Fortunately, one of the first treasures to be seen in this fabulous treasure trove is a little gem of a painting by Filippo Lippi of the Madonna. And months later, you'll suddenly find yourself being haunted by the memory of the wonder and innocence of that rapturous face. Siena. With each passing minute on the streets of Siena, the present drops further away. Our aggressive little car, our sunglasses, and our casual clothes seem more and more out of place amid all this classic dignity. And by the time we reach the breathtaking amphitheater that serves for a main piazza, there would be no surprise in discovering that we had inadvertently stumbled into a full Renaissance reception for a visiting Medici. Sidonia. In this minuscule seaside village stands the ancient and venerable Torre Senese di San Biagio, or the Sienese Watchtower of St. Blaise, our home for the summer. There are times, though, when this old house of ours seems to retreat into melancholy because of our non-military intrusion, for the ramparts now only guard us as we sunbathe and the windows behind the piano stare out to sea and await a foe that never comes. Spoleto. A formal opening night at the Minotti Festival, and off we set in black tie and patent leather, as unsteadily as the dowagers and debutantes teetering on their treacherous high heels, risking life, limb, and dignity for the cause of art. Spoleto was built for sure-footed mountain folk and their goats, and every inch of its charming little streets and inviting byways is a cobblestone booby trap. Our appearance and behavior must baffle the indulgence Politini. Or do they wisely dismiss us as half-witted peacocks?
Orvieto. Recipe for contentment on a summer afternoon. Bread, cheese, a roast chicken, a bottle of the wonderful local white wine, a shade tree on a hillside, and that ancient and arrogantly walled town in the distance. Oh, yes, add the faintest hint of a shepherd's pipe. Sorry. Since Caesar's legions first marched through here, this little suburb of Genoa has heard the tramping feet of armies through the centuries. Italian, Napoleonic, Austrian, German, British, American. Yet on this summer night, as I stood by the ruins of a Roman bridge, not one of their ghosts dared to disturb the timeless and enchanting games the moon was playing endlessly with the waves. Roma. Open your windows in Rome on a Sunday morning, and it's the third act of Tosca. Bells, 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 bells. Banging, clanging, jingling, jangling, calling, answering, ringing, tintinabulating from every corner of the city. The air is alive and quivering with the sounds of bells. <laughs> Tarquinia. Driving south to Rome on that most ancient of highways, the Via Aurelia, the awesome sight of Tarquinia sweeps into view. The citadel atop that sheer cliff seems impregnable, yet its Etruscan defenders are long gone, as are the Roman invaders, and we, too, soon pass on our way leaving behind only the spectral echoes of those ignorant armies that clash by night.
Positano. This is the skippingest town in the world, and maybe the most delicious, too. With every good intention, you start out sober-minded and well-behaved for a quiet stroll. But from somewhere comes a smile, a tune, a joke, a song, a giggle, and suddenly the night is filled with laughter and music, and the alleys and lanes are running higgledy-piggledy down, down, down to the sea. And before you can stop yourself, you are skipping, laughing, dancing, running, singing down, 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 down to the sea. And when you get there, well... When you get there, you realize that this is where you mislaid your heart. <laughs>